Welcome back to the shop. Just a short little video here on some playing around that I did when I had some spare time. Hopefully it might trigger some idea in somebody's head. I don't know. Uh, as far as the COVID-19, it has doubled in this area, doubled in this city since last Friday's video. Um, <laughs> So I hope everybody's doing okay, and I'll see you when I can. Hope you enjoy the video. Have the camera in nice and close so you can see what's going on here. You are looking at the gear that came with my first mini lathe. This goes on the motor shaft. And years ago, all of a sudden, the lathe started making a funky noise. And taking it apart, what I figured out is you can see, and I turn it around so I can point, see the scalloping that's in here? Um, that belt actually wore it out, and the belt was starting to jump teeth when it was under load. So I was surprised to see that. The belt looked like it was okay, uh, just the gear wore out. So I had ordered uh, back then, this is probably three, four, these last about three, four years, I guess. I had ordered uh, replacement gear from LMS, who calls it a motor pulley, which I thought was really funny. And that's been working on the lathe just fine until the other day, I realized there was some kind of play when I moved the chuck. And with a flashlight, you can look down in there without taking it apart. And I could see this guy has got some movement on the motor shaft without the shaft moving. So that's telling me that the keyway is beating up this groove and it's getting wider. Now this one looks fine, so I don't know why this wore out, but this didn't have a problem. And I remember when I installed that guy, um, it was really tight and snug, so there was no slop in it at all. So now I'm thinking, great, uh, buy another one of these and pay for the shipping, or make one. So I was thinking, all right, uh, typical problem, you always, you know, how do you find a cutter that makes this thing? So I figured out, you know, the diameter and the pitch and this and that, and you go looking and I cannot find a cutter which will do this square bottom straight walls. So, all right, <laughs> forget it. Let me see. Also, the problem is this is 17 teeth, 360 divided by 17. You wind up with, I think it was around two tenths of a degree um, off so it's not even so I'm thinking um, can I is that two tenths matter so you know I've got these guys so let me try making a gear with this ignoring the two tenths so here it is boom done made it out of brass uh, <clears throat> yeah the bottom is not square at all because this guy is pointed um, and this was the one for 17 teeth. But you can see here, like here, this guy is significantly wider than this tooth, the flat surface here. So yeah, two tenths does count because I divided it by um, <coughs> 360 and then I threw in a degree like you know, every six teeth or something so it winds up right back at zero degrees. You know, you went, we went completely around 360. So this ain't gonna work. Um, <clears throat> uh, in any case, I said, well, let me try making one of my own little tools here. <clears throat> so I'll quickly bang out the arbor. It's square, flat. Little bitty guy from Harbor Freight figured out 60 degrees in the flat and all this junk and it works pretty good so <coughs> ah, excuse me i'm thinking let me try it just on a piece of plastic to see if it cuts right and it did it did a nice pretty quick little job 
but I'm looking at this going, wait a minute, this is cool. This is a knob, boy. Um, <clears throat> so this is a lot quicker to set up than the rotary table and plunging with an end mill. So I really was thrilled with this thing. So I'm going to make another one of these, make one that's round and make one that's a point because the point can do the straight line knurling, which I don't have the capability of in the shop. So uh, I'm thrilled with that. I think this is another little capability to the shop that's interesting for future projects. So now I'm thinking, all right, this tool does a great job on plastic. Will it cut brass? So I just take a piece out of the uh, scrap drawer and yeah, it was doing a really nice job until it grabbed it and pulled it right out of the uh, 5C collet because I didn't have it tight enough, I guess. And boy, you can see it took one major chunk. It threw it across the shop, scared me to death. Took one major slice out of it doing it and didn't break it. I was shocked at that. I mean, I would figured that should be snapped off. This is a teeny little one eighth inch uh, piece of high speed steel. So, okay, it will cut brass, plastic, and I'm sure aluminum too. But then I started thinking about this guy out of thinking out of the box going, do I really need 17 teeth? Why can't I make it 18 teeth? It'll be slightly bigger. Who cares? So let me do the math and figure out how much bigger it's going to be or what would happen. Because 18 divides into 360 uh, every 20 degrees. So I can make it with the spindex. So trying to caliper the outside diameter, I didn't really trust it because um, the gear is kind of worn. So I put a piece of tape around the outside, made a line, took the tape off and measured it from line to line. And turns out it's three inch uh, circumference. So you do the math, um, divide uh, three inches by 18 teeth, perfect. And then you gotta go backwards now to find the diameter and figured that out. So the original diameter here is 0 0.940. The diameter of an 18 tooth gear is one inch. So that's, it's, it's one inch and 11,000. So basically 60 thousandths bigger. Big deal. Let me make one um, out of plastic for fun and, and make it 18 teeth. So bingo, there it is came out perfect. I mean, I guess you can't really see it, but it's it's an insignificant difference in diameter. And the teeth look a little funny because I didn't realize the back half of this guy was sticking out. So when I finally hit the 85,000th depth, the back half was just taking a slice out of this thing. So this guy goes um, up over, down, over, and then down. So uh, it came out nice and easy. I guess there was an A to Z drill bit, which gave me right on the money, uh, the bore that I needed. So now the, the decision is, do I make one out of metal, aluminum, or brass, and risk wearing the belt out? Or do I make one um, out of plastic? I think I'm gonna make it out of plastic. So I'll make another one. But the pitch is right on the money. Um, matching this guy, it's just you know, 60 thousandths bigger in diameter. Um, which, what, is 30 thousandths per side then? I got variable speed on the lathe, I don't care, so uh, redo this because plastic it takes two seconds you know you can make like 50,000 depth cuts and, and bing you're done so it just takes a while to do this I know I've seen click spring too just take the entire swipe per tooth and I don't think I can do that I mean doing this guy was like wow um, so plastic I was taking 20 thousandths twice, so I'm at 40 thousandths depth, and then 15 thousandths, and then uh, 10 to get to it. 
So it came out nice. So if you guys want to play around and make gears or whatever, this thing is cool. I definitely would say make one of these guys. Thank you.